Hi friends, my name's Nadine, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm going to share with you my reading plans, or some of them, for um, February 2024. Um, so there are lots of books that I'm hoping to get to in February, as is always the case, any month I could say that. Um, but there is the Gothic Hearts reading challenge taking place also, and um, it's the first time I'm going to um, read along with that. So yeah, really exciting. I have tried really hard to choose things from my shelves for the prompts. Um, I have had to order one book from the library, uh, but otherwise, yeah, I think I'm covered. So it's kind of maybe loosely covered, but yeah, covered. So anyway, without further ado. So there are seven main prompts. Um, the first one is Dracula. Read a gothic story with a vampire love interest. Now, I was tempted to go for Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice because I'm wanting to reread the series and actually Interview, which is obviously the first book in the series, is the only one that I haven't read. Um, but I don't own it. And as I said, I am trying to just read from my shelves. So I have gone for... The Vampire, a novel of death, love and the agonies of immortality by Tom Holland. Um, so it says, Lord Byron's personal physician, Polidori, is generally credited with authorship of the first modern vampire story. Its hero was titled Fascinating and Deadly Dangerous to Know. In fact, a thinly veiled portrayal of the great poet himself. But Polidori's story only hinted at the truth. It did not tell it all. And was it not Byron himself who commented that truth is stranger than fiction? So it is that the myth has become reality. Rebecca Carville, desperate to track down the sole remaining copy of Byron's lost memoirs, finds herself sharing a bottle of Chateau Lafitte with the dissolute adventurer, staggered to find him not only alive, but looking as beautiful and ethereal as he did nearly 200 years ago. But Byron is weary with the burden of immortality. Sensing a kindred spirit as well as a rapt audience, he agrees to relate the story of his extraordinary life, beginning with his dark and mysterious initiation into the ways of the undead. So, yeah, it sounds kind of interview with a vampire-ish. Um, but yeah, that's been on my shelf for years. So hopefully I'll finally get around to it. Prompt number two, Wuthering Heights. Read a gothic story featuring a large estate. And so for that, I'm going for... Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. Um, so this says, living in the Blackwood family home with only her sister Constance and her uncle Julian for company, Mary Katz just wants to preserve their delicate way of life. But ever since Constance was acquitted of murdering the rest of the family, the world isn't leaving the Blackwoods alone. And when cousin Charles arrives, armed with overtures of friendship and a desperate need to get into the safe, Mary Katz must do everything in her power to protect her remaining family. So that sounds interesting. Uh, number three, Jane Eyre. Read a gothic story featuring a governess. So there are loads of these, um, but I had a route around on my Kindle and the one that I'm going to try and go for is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. Um, so, it says here, Angelfield House stands abandoned and forgotten. It was once home to the March family. Fascinating, manipulative Isabel, brutal, dangerous Charlie, and the wild, untamed twins, Emmeline and Adeline. But the house hides a chilling secret which strikes at the very heart of each of them, tearing their lives apart. Now Margaret Lee is investigating Angelfield's past and its mysterious connection to the enigmatic writer Vida Winter. Uh, Vida's history is mesmerising, a tale of ghosts, governesses and gothic strangeness. But as Margaret succumbs to the power of her storytelling, two parallel stories begin to unfold. What has Angelfield been hiding? What is the secret that strikes at the heart of Margaret's own troubled life? And can both women ever confront the ghosts that haunt them? So again, that has been on my Kindle for a long time. Um, I bought that back in 2019. Um, so... Uh, five years on. Let's see if I finally get around to it. Number four, Tool Witch. 
read a gothic story with a BIPOC main character. Um, so the one that I've gone for for this is one that I've just bought this month on Kindle and I'm really really looking forward to it so I was honestly going to shoehorn this in anywhere I could anyway. Um, so it is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Marino Garcia. Um, so I did get some pictures up these. So yeah, that was the 13th sale. The cover for that. And we've got Silver Nitrate. So this says it's a breathtaking blend of Mexican horror movies and dark occultism. Um, Montserrat has always been overlooked. She's a talented sound editor, but she's left out of the boys club running the film industry in 90s Mexico City. And she's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan, a charming if faded soap opera star, even though she's been in love with him since childhood. Then Tristan discovers his new neighbour is the cult horror director, Abel Urueta, sorry for pronunciation, and the legendary auteur claims he has a way to change their lives even if his tales of a Nazi occultist imbuing magic into highly volatile silver nitrate stock sounds like sheer fantasy. The magic film was never finished, which is why Urueta swears his career vanished overnight. He is cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scene and lift the curse, but Montserrat soon notices the dark present following her. presence following her. As they work together to unravel the mystery of the film and the obscure occultist who once roamed their city, Montserrat and Tristan might just find out that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. So yeah, I read uh, Mexican Gothic uh, a couple of years back and I really, really loved that. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, next, number five, Gaywick. Read a book with an LGBTQ main character. And for that one, I have chosen Affinity by Sarah Waters. And then this says, from the dark heart of a Victorian prison, disgraced spiritualist Selena Dawes weaves an enigmatic spell. Is she a fraud or a prodigy? By the time it all begins to matter, you'll find yourself desperately wanting to believe in magic. And then it has like this quote on it saying, now you know why you are drawn to me, why your flesh comes creeping to mine and what it comes for, let it creep. So yeah, I've never read any Sarah Waters, but she is highly rated, so I'm looking forward to it. And I do have a, a few books by her, so fingers crossed I like this one. Um, six, Moonflower. Read a gothic story set in an exotic location. This, I really struggle to find anything in my library that I felt would fit. So what I have gone for is Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolfo. Um, and this takes place, I think, in a few different locations. Yeah, so it says the story begins with the luxuriant woods and vines of Gascony, then moves on into the rugged splendour of the Apennines. Descriptions of the Chateau at La Vallée, crude peasant villages and the gloomy castle of Udolfo are profoundly atmospheric. And this is one that I've been trying to get to for a while I try and um, you know at least a couple of times a year this pops up on my TBR so fingers crossed fingers crossed we get to that one too and then finally number seven wife in the attic read a gothic retelling and this is where I have ordered something and so I have ordered what moves the dead by T Kingfisher and this is a um, retelling, I think, of the fall of the House of Usher. Um, so let's see what it says. It says, um, when Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. What they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark pulsing lake. Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night and her brother Roderick is consumed with a mysterious malady of the nerves. Aided by a redoubtable British mycologist and a baffled American doctor, Alex must unravel the secret of the House of Usher before it consumes them all. So that sounds so good, I couldn't resist ordering that one. So yeah, those are my plans for the Gothic Hearts reading challenge. As I said, there are a few other books that I'm really, really hoping to get to in February, um, but I will let you know what happens with those. Um, 
are you taking part in this reading challenge? If you've made videos with your TBRs, drop them down below so that I can have a look because I love seeing what everybody chooses. Um, but if you haven't made videos, just let me know what you're planning on reading, if you are planning on picking up anything gothic. Okay, and that is it guys. I will catch you next time. Bye!